Yo, what up guys? Morning coffee. Right, so in my previous video, I <clears throat> spoke about the microservice architecture and we briefly touched on the front end and writing our UIs into microservices and I've built four services and after that I actually started building out my website and using that reference architecture to, to build out my microservices and I quickly realized that I needed a way to deploy and build the stuff automatically because it became quite painful when we when you check in, when you make some code across multiple repositories and you want to get this live, you have to individually go and compile and build and deploy um, all these different services. Okay, so I want to show you guys Kubernetes. Now, Kubernetes is our going to be running our infrastructure. And the cool thing about it is Kubernetes can run anywhere. So doesn't matter which cloud provider you use, you don't have to worry about how to interface with the cloud provider. It runs on Mac, Linux and Windows. And if we head over to um, the Docker settings on Windows, we can just enable it right there. And it takes about uh, two minutes or so to activate. Now, the cool thing about Kubernetes is we have this YAML file that tells Kubernetes how we want to run our application. You can see here that I'm telling Kubernetes I want two containers, two replicas, and it will run these two containers across my infrastructure. I also tell Kubernetes I want this load balancer, so it'll give me a public IP address and it'll load balance these containers across all you know, this infrastructure here. I also tell it I wanna run this image so uh, for this microservice. Now notice this is 0.0.8, .0 the version number. So it'll go and run that version. The other cool thing is that we also have this concept of a liveliness probe. So this tells Kubernetes to monitor the status endpoint on my microservice. And if any of the infrastructure underneath becomes unresponsive or my application becomes unresponsive, um, Kubernetes will just schedule this container somewhere else and or reschedule the container so that it recycles. And this prevents me from having to get up at night um, to restart services. Kubernetes also has a resource um, constraint setting where you can tell Kubernetes how much CPU and memory your application needs. And this is important because Kubernetes can make smart decisions on where to schedule your application based on the underlying VMs. The other cool thing is that you can give it limits. So if you have a bug in your application um, and you're leaking memory or something, Kubernetes will actually recycle this application without impacting your customers under the hood. And it also helps prevent noisy neighbor um, when you have containers that are eating high CPU and memory so that they don't affect other containers in the infrastructure. If you go over to my repositories, the architecture repository, it has a readme on how to deploy to Kubernetes. For this deployment, we're going to create a namespace um, that's going to hold all our infrastructure. And I'm going to deploy all these microservices. If I head over to PowerShell, I can tell the Kubernetes API I want all these resources. And we can see Kubernetes will automatically start provisioning two containers of each of these microservices across the infrastructure. And if we give it a moment, we can see it's now running. So this is quite cool. I head over to my site and it's up and running and notice the version number is 0.0.8. Now, the key of this video is how do I make changes to my code and automatically deploy and get this version number bumped up. So Docker Hub has this awesome feature called builds and you can set up automated builds on your repository. You can see I have um, my build repository up here for all my container images. It's public so you can check it out. And I've linked up my Git repository with this one. And you can see here, there's some build rules and I've basically told um, Docker Hub where all these container Docker files are and how to tag them. So the cool thing is here is whenever I'm, I tag in, uh, my source code on GitHub, 
it'll automatically notify Docker Hub and Docker Hub will queue builds and build my container images. Then I head over to my content service and I've decided I needed to make a change to the code. So I changed it to um, version 0.9 and I've pushed this to GitHub. Now you can trigger this on push or you can trigger this on different other um, rules. And I've chosen to, to do the uh, release tagging rule. So I go over to my Git repository and I say, I want version nine. I want to create a new release. You can also do pull requests and it depends on what your review process looks like. I publish this and we head over to Docker Hub and if we go over to our builds, if we just refresh this, we will see that GitHub has automatically notified Docker Hub and it started building our container images here. Woo, so you can see we've triggered a build. Now we have some queued and one of them started building. Now this can take a little while for this build process to kick off and stuff, but it's completely free. So this is the serverless from my point of view. I'm running all these builds on Docker Hub's infrastructure and I don't need to maintain any build um, service. I also don't have to worry too much about the security of trying to secure webhooks in my infrastructure. This is like GitHub talking to Docker Hub, which is freaking awesome. Okay, so we can see that the content service has finished building already. So if I head over here and I refresh this, woo, noticed automatically updated to version 9. So you're probably thinking, you did the builds, but how did this automatically deploy? There is this amazing service called Keel. If you head over to keel.sh, um, they talk about how to do deployments um, in an automated fashion. So there's this little service that runs in your cluster called Keel. And basically what it does is it can monitor webhooks, it can monitor um, container registries, and it can also have its own webhook. So you can have you know, Docker Hub can reach out to Keel whenever a build is completed or Keel can sit in the cluster and just poll Docker Hub. Now, I said I didn't want to like have to um, secure a, a webhook endpoint. So I decided to go for the polling mechanism instead. So Keel will poll Docker Hub um, every once so often and will look for container images. And when they are available, it'll simply deploy it. Now, if I head over to my content service deployment YAML, we can see that we have these labels defined. So this is, I'm telling um, Keel that this microservice wants to opt into its service and it wants to have a poll schedule of every minute. And every time a version changes, it will force pull and use the poll trigger mechanism. So Keel is smart enough to automatically determine that, hey, we're using Docker Hub here, so it'll go and poll Docker Hub. And I don't need to put any credentials in because my container registry is public. You can have a private container registry and it will simply use your image secret um, to pull the image. So this is pretty awesome and it's completely free. So we've managed to create a super high tech, poor man's enterprise cloud native serverless GitOps build pipeline with container orchestrated open source deployment systems. So hope that was informative. Um, like and subscribe. Remember to hit the little bell for notifications so you know when I upload. And yeah, hope this was useful and see you guys next time. Peace.